All right, cats. Something that uh, some people have asked about, or, or rather, they're having trouble making changes to their setup, be it like an embouchure change or just even a change of concept or change of equipment. And the challenges of doing that while simultaneously gigging. You know, this can be a pretty tough thing, especially if you're making your living as a musician. I know there were times when uh, I wanted to just, well, you know, take a year off, like go up into the mountains or whatever, go down there and shit, or kind of free distractions. But the problem is, if you make your living as a musician, you know, like start to think to yourself, well, what the heck am I supposed to do? The other part of it too is that when you're making the changes in the practice room, it's cool. It's it's easy to do different things, like to play for a couple of minutes, take a break, play for a couple of minutes, take a break. But you're not being forced to push your range. You're not being forced to play outside of uh, uh, whatever is comfortable for you on the instrument at the time. But then as soon as you get to the gigs, what happens? All the habits that you previously had kick right back in because of course they do, they're habits. Your embouchure might fatigue much more quickly, but also the psychological component can just be crippling. I certainly went through a lot of that myself when I the first year and a half or so of my embouchure change. There were times when I was showing up on gigs and it just didn't work. You couldn't even play out of the staff. And I was there and I was getting paid and I had to do the best I could and kind of like lay low and hide out as well as I could manage. I know I made a lot of unfavorable impressions on a couple of bands well, so a few of those gigs sort of faded away. You're gonna end up where you're supposed to be, I think. But it can be a real blow to your ego. How do you deal with that? Oh, no, that's a good fucking question. I think a lot of it, you have to really believe that what you're doing is the right thing to do. If you're just sort of making arbitrary changes because someone told you you should, but and playing ends up just being a total drag, you no, know, it might not be worth. The when you're on the gig, if you're thinking about new things, and as soon as chops get tired, which they will, especially if you're playing on a new set, the muscles just aren't gonna be necessarily strong in what they need to do to get that to work. Then what happens is you start just thinking about it a lot. You overanalyze the situation. And that's why this idea of just hearing the sound, taking a breath, playing, is such a great way to approach the horn because the more you buy into it, the less you can think about all the little nitty gritty aspects of playing. Your best bet is to just listen for the sound and go for it. Some people will say that that's all you need to do. That probably is all you need to do, but there is value in breaking it down and working on the different aspects of the system, like your ear training, specific exercises for the embouchure, for the tongue. But when you're on the gig, then you need to just as best you can forget about it and let your subconscious take over. And then you can always fall back on that on the gigs and it helps too whenever you're having a lot of performance anxiety where you just start thinking about the mechanics too much and you get your mind outside of the music. But really on the gig it's all about the music, making it happen one way or another. So then the other thing we're talking about here is that the habits kick back in. Ding, 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 light bulb moment there. It's habits, it's the way your body habitually makes the sound on the instrument. I'm not like a total expert on human psychology, but I have successfully applied habits, and all the habits that I've successfully applied were done in basically the same way. I took something very, very simple and just did it every single day until it was an automatic behavior. One habit at a time. Create breathing habits, create ear training habits, whatever it is, whatever type of habit you're trying to work into your playing. It's easy if you focus on one at a time. You can kind of build up some positive momentum here when you start to see like, I've done this one little tiny habit it this day this day this day this day you know it might take some time some habits only take like about a month some habits might take six or eight months to, to really take root especially if you have strong pre-existing habits let's say for example 95% of your trumpet playing is done the old way and then 5% of your trumpet playing is on the new way. That 5% is just whatever this new habit is you're trying to work into your subconscious mind. It doesn't matter how long it takes. Once that habit is working for you, it's gonna be a habit. When you show up to the gigs, that one little thing is gonna basically operate that way most, if not all the time. So then of course, once you've got the one habit set, then you just move on to the next habit. And it takes a lot of patience to do that, to change these one little things at a time. It's a really great way to do it and it will work. You know, the other big part of this is to just accept the fact that, you know, it's gonna kind of suck for a while. You're not gonna make a linear progress. You're not just gonna be killing it. I'm sitting here eating an egg before I go in. You know, another thing too is to be honest with your employers, be honest with your your colleagues that you're playing with, the other trumpet players that you're working with, or the other musicians in the band, you know, they'll help you out. They'll cover your ass. And if they don't, you know, them, they suck. 
Mike Barone, right? I was playing in his big band, and when I decided to change my embouchure, I had just joined the band. Like, I called him up and I said, hey, yo, Mike, uh, I'm gonna go through this embouchure change, and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to play or not. Do you wanna kick me out? You do it now. And he said, no, nah, just come and do what you can do. So he was cool about it, and then that way I didn't have to sweat it so much when I was showing up to the gigs. Like, and then there were other band leaders that I didn't tell. I was just trying to hide out. I was making money from them and working. And incidentally, those are the groups where I got canned. Sit third trumpet for a while. If you don't overextend yourself, ask people to help you out. Probably they want to step up to the plate anyways. All right, I'm going to go practice a little bit and then teach some lessons. Talk to you soon, cats. Bye.